yes. So uh, I'm here to talk about uh, how to design and tracking associated patterns. And first, I'd like you all to take a pen and a paper. <laughs> Or a computer. I think they make it system. There is a picture. Write a funny sentence. Sus, what comes to your mind? <laughs> One sentence, funny sentence, what comes to mind of the picture? I see a cow. No, no password. Congratulations, Sona. <laughs> you just won the competition. <laughs> right, writing doesn't involve talking. What? Okay, and when you're ready, you put the paper away. So what I'm going to talk about today is actually two papers that have been published in uh, I don't take a conference last year and this year. And what I'm going to go through is a little bit uh, motivation <coughs> and, and the experiment we did in 2011. Then I will show you the guidelines for the updated passwords, which I actually have lectured here before. And uh, then I talk a little bit about the data we collected, and then in the end, I thought that the cracking experiment of the end this year. So in uh, NORSEC 2011, we uh, had to that first paper where we reported how, how students managed to deal with associated passwords, how they build them, and how they remember it. Um, and we had in that time we had it so that students were show ten websites and they had to make just the passwords for them. So they had ten passwords to remember. And the memory rates were rather good, but it was criticized that uh, because as you saw the picture there, that people could take just things from the picture, and it's already available for the crackers that these passwords are very easy to crack. And that we wanted to address in our next paper. And we tried to um, crack these passwords which were collected in 2011 in this 2012 paper. So in the 2011, we had um, engineering passwords students they were between 19 and 25 years old. Everybody were Norwegians except one who was from Iceland. Um, experiment did contain three phases. We had an education phase where I taught students how to make passwords. Then they had to design passwords and in the end they had to recall them. And all together we got 508 associated passwords, and these we used this year. <coughs> the guidelines for the associated passwords were as follows, that we're supposed to take something from the picture, you associate the picture, and then you take something personal, which is not related to the picture. It can be, but it does not need to be. And then you mix these two in the way you want to. <coughs> and then in the third, because I have been studying these passwords previously, I have made uh, um, targeted password guidelines for three categories. Person can use word categories or uh, mixture categories or non-word categories. And if you use word passwords, that means that you only have words in your password. Um, those passwords should be at least 13 characters long. 
And in this it contains many source words. And you should modify them. The longer the password is, the less modification you need. The mixer passwords are that there are words, but then there's some other characters between words. So you get the mixture. Same here, um, you should use the sort words. You should modify them. But if you have a long password, you don't need so many modifications. And these passwords are supposed to be minimum 11 characters. And then we have the non-passwords. The minimum for these are nine, pass uh, nine characters. And the guideline says that uh, you should use, of course, all the character sets. But if you have a longer password, you can uh, drop some of the character sets. So this is in very short way what I told you now, I told you the students. Then I give you an example. Here you see a bookstore, online bookstore. That's the Finnish website. And this is the one of the students that's supposed to associate. And here are some examples of all three categories. I, these are my personal associations. I, first time when I look at the, I saw the logo. There's a kind of triangle, or it's actually A, I think. I got everything in so that the triangle and circle come from that A. And it's quite a pale website, so that's the first it pops out, for me, at least, so I have used it. So triangle and circle. And because it was a bookstore, my personal thing was actually not personal, but what really comes to my mind from the bookstore was the first book I ever read. And it was of course in Finnish, so I had to translate it. But translated it as Princess with the Golden Bow. And that was uh, 84 I read it. But that's something very personal to me. I know that by myself. So then I just put these things together. Uh, if I use just words, I have to make it long. Uh, but you can see, right? says for this, triangle, circle, princess with the golden ball. Only a couple of modifications. Same, for example, a mixture. There I have a triangle and circle in the beginning. V at O, and princess with the golden ball. It comes a mixture when you add characters between the words. And an onward. The first one I have to take in the first letters of the, uh, of the words, and the second one I have written them between each other. If you have you ever tried to write the password so that uh, you write first the one word and then you put it in every second place, it's a funny exercise you would try. So that was taught to the students, and now they had made them passwords, 10 different websites. And this is the description of we got, what we actually can use in the cracking part. Uh, as I said, there were Norwegian students, so 60% of them used the Norwegian language. Um, next, first order used language was the English. Then came Finnish, because some of the websites were Finnish. And the bilingual passwords were mostly Norwegian and English. So this indicates that if you know the user, you can just take his uh, mod mother tongue and use it when you crack it. Modifications. Um, around 90% of the mixture passwords are modified. Uh, but they were a less modified than I hoped them to be. Uh, the most common modification what was used, and quite often the only one was the capitulation, that they had capitalized the first uh, word, the first letter. Uh, there were, of course, other modifications, and they were very similar to leaf alphabets. So, 
this is actually something we already know and can be used. And is used for tracking. So they come to this association elements. Those I have categorized as the three category. Primary ones are those which you can actually list from the website. So if you are a cracker, you can see the picture and take all the words which existed there. Uh, 57% of those are primary. Secondary are those that you see the picture and then you associate something. Like me looking at that uh, bookstore website and I took the first book I ever read. That is not on the website, but that's something very easy to ask for you. Uh, Territory, they are those that you associate something and you associate it once more. So there was one person who had a very good example of the uh, association. He was in a mu music store and he used Metallica as a band and took the drama and took the, um, his sign, horoscope sign, and he used. I had no way to think about it. It was a music store. Website, password. Uh, yeah. Then about those passwords, a little bit more. Uh, almost 86% of them <coughs> began with the letter. And 70% began with the same letter that the website started. That's something you can use in Gretchen. Um, and, well, 84% of those uh, first letters, they were capitalized. And 31% of the passwords contain the name of the site in some form or another. And then it was interesting, uh, the colors. So actually if you have very strong colors in your website, they are more easy to take in the password. And almost 11% included the color and 65% of those passwords were associated in the site where the colors were strong. Then I talk about that there's no factors what I ask persons to take in. So not just an association, but also personal factor. 50% did not want to take it. 14% took it was service related. And site related for 5%. So site related, you actually could take the personal factors all from the website. And 66% did not, uh, at all they were not related. So I had uh, 51 students and none of them had the same personal factors. And they varied a lot. Uh, how to categorize was a little bit almost nonsense talk. Because they were each in their own category. And if you don't know the users, that's something where it is, it is very difficult to find out. And then, what we used in the cracking part was the password semantics. So if you have a word, password, then you just have a word, a word, a word, a word. You can Take a word list and add them like this. Uh, mixture, there we have put the non word parts between the words. So the semantics looks like that. And the non word is what we actually have learned earlier to be a password. So you have just characters after each other. And I assume that you wonder how well those were remembered, even if it's not the really this year's talk. But um, this is what we got the last year. Um, I had an earlier study in 2008 and 2009 where I used uh, this um, targeted password category guidelines. 
and then students were able to remember 31% of them. And this group too, uh, started in 2011, now they had the 10 passwords with association. The same guidelines which I just showed you. And now the recall percent was almost 50%. So I would say it's quite good for the 10 passwords. So our analysis showed that uh, associated passwords really increase the memorability of the password. But the funny thing was that the strongest passwords were the best remembered. And I know you think that this is not nonsense, but it actually has the logic inside it. Because when you have when students have to make a structure, they had an associated the password and they had the personal factor and they had to put it together, they had to work a little bit. And when they were told how to make it strong, they were clearly a bit more, and they practiced clearly a bit. Uh, so those uh, good ones became best remembered. And then I also did it that way that I looked at um, uh, when they wrote, they decided the password, and the next day was the first recall session. And there, if you think about uh, our, there's those uh, primary and secondary on the table there. So the first day, if they made an error, let's like say mixed couple of letters or forgot the one uh, modification, they had those one, two errors. But when they had made that first error, it was actually funny to see that they, that same error that they had written down the day after, was then used as a password in a week after and uh, afterwards. So that when you practice, and you have once practiced it or a couple of times practiced it, then you remember that one much better. So my point is that take a little research, a uh, rehearsal session before you actually do your password, write it down, or use it, so you remember the actual password. And then we come to this cracking ex experiment this year. Uh, yeah, so we used the MD5 script with salt, and we used the same salt. Uh, I don't think we had a very good computer, or it was just normal computer we used, and it was IT department who helped us there. So that computer had something else to handle similar, similar at the same time. So that really did reduce the cracking speed. And we run a couple of uh, cracking sessions. On the first one, we used the uh, English and Norwegian word list from uh, Fedora. Um, and then we used the John the Triple because we were in no sec no 11, we were asked to use John the Triple. So we used that one. See how it works. And we had these 508 passwords. We <coughs> are first with the word list mode and we are able to crack three. So first one was uh, eight character long passwords. It only contained digits, so it was rather easy. Second one was the English sound with capital letter first, and third one was Norwegian comedy, like comedy. So these were rather easy, and they were very weak. But others we did not manage to crack. So then we tried something else. We took um, John the Tripper again and used increment, incremental mode. And, and we were able to crack 11 out of the remaining 505 passwords. And once again, they were all very weak. 
Det är väl utan en karaktär lång. But uh, we were a little bit surprised that we did not manage to crack more because there were quite many, which were less than eight characters long passwords. Uh, so if you look at these, the five character long passwords, we had two of them. Um, they were kind of, they had, they were mixed to passwords, so there was a word. But then there was a, a non-word end. It did, did, it did not contain only tickets, but only special characters. So we assumed that that was the reason that it was not found. Uh, one was totally capitalized, non-password. Non-word password. Uh, three, uh, three next ones, the six character on passwords, and they were those non-word passwords. But there was one word password. But problem with that, we assumed was that that was uh, having a little bit strange capitulation and also common modification inside. So it was not used to lead alphabets there. And then we have the four non word, non -word passwords with seven characters. And in the end, there was again a, non, a not very common modification. So that was our case, that's why Tomberry put it not manage those. Or maybe we did something wrong. That's another possibility. Then we tried something else, because we had the data. So um, we wanted to see if we could reduce the word list because the word lists were now quite large, the whole English and Norwegian word list in Canada. So we created our own, and these are based on the data was collected. In the experiment, we asked specifically ask uh, students to say what kind of association they had used. So we had all the associations. Uh, so we listed this, uh, it contained 247 elements, mostly words, but also tickets, symbols and internet addresses. So this is something what, uh, um, yeah, this is something Tracker normally could not do because it also contained those uh, primary, uh, primary content, primary, but also secondary and tertiary associations. <coughs> so that's what is not common, commonly known, or, so you cannot get from the website. So we run that one, and we were expecting good results. Uh, then we also, yeah. What we used as a modification was those uh, normal rules that we earlier used as a modification. Then we used between characters. And that was something also we could uh, collect in from the data. So we saw what kind of uh, characters students use between. And here in the end, on the lowest part, you see the most of the used characters in the between. So we used this one. And then we made a new list so that it contains one, two or three words on that uh, reduced word list, plus these um, between characters, and got the new, new final word list. And we had them, uh, we checked, we had 107 passwords we were expecting to be correct. but we only managed to crack one. The whole run took six days for us, a little bit more. And the word what we found was only three letters long. Uh, no, three letter word, yeah. So we were missing quite many 
And then we went back to the passwords which we were expecting to be cracked. And we noticed that there were several reasons why we don't manage. So we had the list of those associated words. But when the students had used them, they had used them either in a, a dialect, or they had made a grammatical errors, dropped out some letters. Um, second reason was that uh, it was not just the, that associated word what they used, and not just the personal factor. They had made the full sentences, so they had added all the verbs and nonsense, and I mean, nonsense adjectives. They were not included in our list. And then they had the same characters modified with different uh, uh, substitutions. And the last reason was that uh, there was trace calculation, not the first one, but the different letter in each word they capitalized. And we actually we tried to make that short ripple work like that, that it has a different capitalization in different words, but we were not able to do that. At least not the time we were given. So that's the reason why we contact Ben and ask a little bit help. Because obviously we are not so very good crackers. And so we challenged Ben and his friend with the nine passwords. We took three word passwords, three uh, mixture passwords, and three non-passwords, non-word passwords. And one was weak, one was good, and one was strong in each category. We salted them and used the MD bypass. And all these passwords, I wanted to take that kind of passwords because they also remembered in the 2011. So all these nine passwords remember, they remembered every time it was asked. And as far as I know, you have not able to crack any of them. And that's not just for me guys, because I actually put that up on a blog post and uh, I knew there were several of you people trying to crack them, but nobody had been able to crack them yet. And they are just unsorted MD5. So well, I remember the post, and I remember thinking, that's interesting, but I don't find it there. <laughs> I think that's it there. Um, so, when they did not manage, we tried last cracking ourselves. We took only those three word ones, word passwords. And then we went back to our data. And now really, really, really try to check that we had all the words which were used. So we had the words, association words, we took the common verbs, nouns, prepositions, so we could make uh, meaningful sentences. And then we also added personal factors this time. So that's something what we could do because we had, we had them. But still, we're only able to find one. And that, I don't know, it was both depressing, but a uh, good thing at the same time. So here are the passwords. Uh, not exactly the passwords which are in the complex, but the same structure. <laughs> that first one, I wish I could have success. That we managed to crack. So there is four words and very easy capitulation. Um, but the rest, um, I have changed the rest so that you still can try to crack them. You will get you with it. Uh, the second one is that uh, where I think the problem came, if you look at the words, you see that there's no vision in English. A V hour, and I'll just finish this as well. V hour three glossy, that uh, glossy is actually glass in Finnish. So there you have three languages, and they are capitalized, except that the 
third word is the capitalized, the second letter, and not the first one. Um, then the next one is the middle older settles. settles. I think it's a game, if I have understood right. Um, then the problem comes with that uh, four instead of a. Uh, it should be capitalized A, but it's, there's four, and I think that's the reason why some people didn't manage that one. Uh, I have absolutely no idea why did not we, we did not manage that college. It's just a um, word, easy word, and that there are four characters afterwards. Next one, um, that there's interesting thing in the next the next one. Uh, it says yes, Copoferia. So those who don't know Norwegian, it says that I'm going to the holidays. Uh, feria, uh, that's missing one e when it's written. So there's a grammatical error. Also, that there's that po uh, written with latex code. So there's a double substitution instead of one. But the interesting thing was that I tried online uh, MD5 generators, and each got, uh, each gave me a different hash, and I don't know why. Uh, I wonder if it's something to do how it uh, compiled the letters there, those uh, symbols. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing for the hash that you get the different hash each time from the different uh, generator. But that's the reason. Next one, uh, there you have a word, a finish again, salati, that means a salad. And you have a word written in the middle of it. Uh, next one is again just the letters and uh, digits. I don't know why it was not correct. And then those two last ones, they are both based on the words. The first one is uh, just the children lyrics and they the first the letters. And it's quite easy to remember quite easy to write. And the next one as well, you have two words put together so that you write them between each other. Again, you have two words easy to remember and you you, just, uh, you can try to write it down there, but you write first one first and then second one to every second place. So, how bad you can try to crack them. So, conclusion part. <coughs> so, we were criticized. The, criti the biggest criticized was that uh, you could get those passwords from the site, just looking at the site and take the association there. All the words you can think of there. Um, but it's not enough to have all the associations. You need to have something else. You need to have you need to have words so you can make uh, sentences, and that makes the list quite large. But of course we. We still a little bit hesitate to say that uh, you would take only use those what is on the website. So you should really associate, and that's the associate that when you have a website or you have a picture, you take something there which is uh, which you have a connection to, you have a memory about it, and you use that. And if you mix it, you modify it, you use the uh, password guidelines, as I told you before. 
you can mix them in such a way that they become quite hard to crack, at least for us. So, yeah, that's what we thought. It would be quite good. And especially if you, if I'm teaching a passwords, I recommend to use several languages in the same time. Use several languages, do some grammatical mistakes, use dialect, and there you have it. You write the full sentences and take some letters away or use the first two letters, and between letters and so on. You get the quite memorable password. Take a pen again and try to write the sentence. You managed to write the same sentence in the beginning. And yep, that was my talk today. Questions? Perhaps I'm underestimating my own talking about it, but I see the passwords that you've shown on the screen. I think, well, I'd be impressive if I would correct most of those passwords. Uh, I don't think it's uh, strange that you didn't correct those, but perhaps some of the more uh, power correctness among us can share their opinion on this. But I think these are the kinds of passwords that you would expect to be left uncorrect. Anyone could, could you go back to some of the uncracked slides? Yes, we were, yeah, I mean, I'm sure the, the slides will be available later, but we were all <coughs> typing away, and some of us actually uh, spent a lot of time trying to actually remember how to type some of the letters. <laughs> yeah. and Jeremy, what's what are your thoughts on some of those? I literally just walked in, dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nine passwords. You, you, yeah, I oh, did. Those are the ones you showed me. Those yeah, ones. yeah. The blog post I did, and yeah, these are and that. these are examples of those nine passwords and how they are constructed, and it's unsorted MD5. And for the, the nine MD5 hashes that I posted, as far as I can remember, nobody have been able to crack any of those nine hashes yet. The so why can't you crack these? The only two that I see that would be prime candidates, you know, that I'd be able to crack are I Wish Academic Success and uh, the College F546. Uh, those would probably be the most probable if I were to actually attempt those. Um, the one just beneath that, the J36 pound 5K, screw that, I'm never going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> the one just beneath it, highly unlikely, unless I had some other plane in my dictionary I'd crack that was sort of similar to that in the past, um, and it was just like a permutation. Yeah. Those are kind of my initial thoughts on this. Oh, so that's what we did about all these ones. Yeah. More comments? Yeah. This is a wonderful presentation and a great set of suggestions. But regardless of your advice, we are reaching the level where to be able to be the people who spend 10 kilowatt of electricity on cracking passwords, <laughs> the advice has to lead to things that are really difficult for even dedicated users to do. If you go back to one of your first slides, where you had some password that you had come up with yourself, you, you would see that you won't be able yourself to retire that password correctly because you made a spelling mistake. Yeah. Yeah, for reason. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have I done that? Process. <laughs> 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 really difficult to crack and so on and so on. When you try and do that, first of all, good luck doing that on an iPad. And secondly, yeah, I like you. And secondly, you know, you will be spending a few attempts trying to say, well, I'm sure it was the time I served the princess. Was it the princess? Or was it the lady? Or was it the girl? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's very fun to merge. But that's, that's, that's why you require two two entries to verify the password on the info. Uh, that that does word to mix and non-word, and they are not used to to use them all. Just as something you what you really what's kind of most suitable for you. 
the verbs are not suitable for me because I do make thoughts of these, as you nicely noted. Uh, so maybe I use something else like non-word things just to take the first or last letters. I do remember the story. I, I want to stress that my topic is not really a critique of no, no, no. advice. I think that within passwords you are giving very good advice. I think that it's just passwords that are running out of steam against the kind of adversaries that we have in this country. Yeah. Uh, I have you actually calculated the MDI for those so we used like a sample. Now I did not hear. Oh, so what, there's a kind of a IRC discussion going on about how the MD5s themselves were created because as you noted, you were getting different results and some of that's going to do with if they're interpreting it in the correct locale, whatever, or if they are using UTF-8, um, a whole number of things that can mess it up when you've got, uh, say, non uh, well, I'll just say non-English letters, I guess. Um, so the questions that we're having is, like, when you go to make the MD5 sum, you've got to be getting all of that right, and, you know, there's, uh, like, if you're using command line and Linux MD5 sum, you got to make sure that you don't have the new line as part of it, and so forth. So we were just, we're curious to, to make sure that the way they were generated in the first place means that the MD5s are correct. Okay, those nine which we're giving the bed that I have uh, passed with Mac. And the rest of us uh, is done by Anders in our ID lab. Absolutely no idea what he did, but uh, I'm quite sure he. So, so, in a, okay. so, in a way, what you are actually requesting is that uh, if, if Kirsi could, you know, do it once more, and she will still not reveal the plain text password to us, but she will explain <coughs> the configuration of the operating system and the command lines used in blah blah blah, <coughs> so that we can, you know, in a, in, in, in a way we could verify that they are generating the MD5 sums from the great Josette. Mm -hmm. uh, what I need, all those others, all those nine, that one I did not manage to kind of come back with other crackers, but uh, everything else that I tried to use came with exactly the same hash. So it's supposed to be quite. Oh, okay. Uh, only that one was problem. Yep. So, for the, oh, I was going to say, so really the, the people that are uh, only English speakers, where are the great disadvantage for making uh, good passwords? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I use Finnish. <laughs> but then you get lots of funny words. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, um, paradoxically, um, we, we're all left on our own to figure out a strategy for uh, our passwords. Because if, let's say, uh, um, as an undergrad uh, student in IT or, or even at high school, you learn this is how you should create your passwords and this is how you should store and manage them, that would be an attack vector. Okay? So we, paradoxically, we cannot give a general advice on uh, creating passwords. Uh, and I will also say that when you come to this kind of strategy, as was already mentioned, you get problems typing them. And I, uh, without revealing too much of my personal strategy, uh, you know, when you have to say sort of uppercase, lowercase, this and that, uh, it, it is an extra muscular effort to actually go uppercase and lowercase. So I tend to not do that. Well, I have a couple of no's during my password, but not up and down and up and down all the time through the password. So, so uh, that's an advice for uh, those who try to crack my, my password. <laughs> Only have to <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a hash? <laughs> So there are these kind of heuristics that people use, but in the end, uh, you're on your own, really. So uh, <laughs> what's your comment on that, uh, Casey? Well, that is actually my comment, that you're on your own, but if you... Right, more really that way. Thank you. My own wrong way. Because I think we are so different. 
that we should we should let to have these three categories. So we are we should not have one general uh, guideline system that use these. Because if you have that, that you have to have uh, uh, two characters, uppercase and two, uppercase and two digits and two symbols, then it, that's exactly what you get. Two, 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 and two, and same order. It comes very easy to break. But when you should a little bit tough set, a little bit put more effort on the teaching part. That you saw different ways to do it, different tactic, tactics to do it. Um, so, I rather like this one. That you should know how many at least you should to have and how you put them together. Not exactly how you put them together, but a little bit hint what you can do to put them together. That's, that's my philosophy. Okay. Yes, uh, I think it's a coffee break. For those of you who didn't get your dose of coffee in this morning, it should be served outside. We'll be back in 15 minutes.